So here we have it. This is a big table with many different choices of potential numerical fluxes that have been uh, proposed in literature uh, for the last 50 years uh, to treat this diffusion problem. Uh, I've made the table in such a way that we have well, the method name on the left, the choice of numerical fluxes as the second column, and then a um, sort of a summary of whether or not these are consistent, conservative, and stable. Um, as this is in part very old material, um, often people were not quite aware of the details of, uh, of uh, the discontinuous lurking uh, methods and, and proposed schemes that we might nowadays say, oh, why, why would you want to propose a method that's instable? And sometimes it's also not quite so obvious if something is stable or not, right? Um, so that's why we're seeing methods that are potentially non-consistent, non-conservative and instable. Now again, this is a table that I, I largely uh, took from, from, from that book that I pointed out earlier. Uh, and it's actually a, by now quite a, a famous table. Um, because the diffusion, pro, diffusion shows up, up everywhere, so almost uh, we always, all, always have to take into account this diffusive uh, flux in some way. Uh, and well, we have a whole bunch of uh, options to pick from. So I didn't, don't think I ordered them in any particular way, uh, maybe in terms of complexity. Um, yeah, probably that's it. I think I ordered these in terms of complexity. So uh, recall our, our finite element formulation, where we have uh, WH and sigma H as our discontinuous Gelurkin approximation spaces, and we have an approximation for the solution phi, that's in, in a sense the solution that we're actually interested in. And we had introduced this auxiliary variable sigma, uh, so we have an approximation for both fields. And I think one, one thing that I found a little bit confusing when I, I started working into this, uh, myself into this material a while back or a couple of years ago, um, was that, well, these, these two fields are coupled, right? Phi, phi and sigma, they're coupled. And we have an identity in a sense um, that says that phi is, or sigma is going to be equal to the gradient of phi multiplied by kappa, right? That's what we have right here. So why don't we just throw away this sigma? Um, because right now we're, we're introducing additional degrees of freedom that potentially don't really add any value. Well, the important thing to realize is that even though sigma is equal to kappa times the gradient of phi for the strong form equations, for the actual solution, the, the exact solution, uh, the same thing does not hold for our approximate, uh, or our finite element approximation to this field. Right, so we would not necessarily obtain a, a sigma here that is going to be exactly the gradient of phi. And in fact, typically, we will not. Yeah, so that's why we actually have two different solution fields and two approximations uh, to, both, uh, to, to any one of these fields. Okay, so then we went through our usual uh, derivation for discontinuous Glurkin methods, and we found that we can we then get these, these, uh, these numerical fluxes again on the boundary, and that's what this table was. We have a whole bunch of choices. So the most natural choice for these numerical fluxes is to simply say, well, I'm going to choose uh, sigma to be equal to phi, or sorry, <laughs> the numerical flux uh, sigma to be equal to sigma. Um, now, that's not going to introduce any element coupling, right? If I choose my numerical flux on, on one side of an element to equal my my uh, find element approximation on that side of the element, and then there's no coupling between elements. Okay, so then the most natural second choice would be to say my evaluation of the flux on the boundary is simply going to be, well, the average of my solution on both sides. Now that's uh, naturally going to be consistent. Um, it's not going to have a jump, so it's going to be conservative. So that's pretty much exactly this first method in the table here, the basel ribain method, where we're defining our numerical fluxes, both for phi and for sigma, simply as the average of our, and I should actually say the finite element solution here on the, on the, on the interface. So that's a very natural choice. Um, it's consistent, it's conservative, but we find that this is actually not stable. And uh, you would get, uh, you would very quick, quickly run into problems where if you would implement something like this, uh, you would end up with uh, um, stiffness matrices that are are not invertible or solutions that are going to jump all over the place. And yeah, that's characteristics of instability. 
um, then a much older method, uh, the Babushka Zlamal method, was saying, well, precisely that, the, the numerical flux evaluated on one side for phi is going to be equal to phi on that side, and the numerical flux of phi evaluated on the other side is going to be equal to the phi approximation on that side. So that's what we have right here, right? Phi hat plus or minus is going to be equal to phi plus or minus. Right, H, H. So that is still conservative, or well, sorry, this is still consistent. Uh, if I have, if I plug my true solution in here, then well, there's not going to be a jump, and I, I get that the the, the 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 numerical flux phi is going to be equal to the true phi. So that's consistent. But we get a jump, right? If I have my numerical uh, flux not equal on either side of the interface, I get a jump. So that makes this non-conservative. Um, now the fact that I have a cross here for the consistency, this is a non-consistent method, comes from the choice of numerical flux for the sigma field. Uh, in the true case, the true solution, I know my relation between sigma and phi, it has to be sigma hat is equal to well, the, the kappa times the gradient of phi, and so certainly not some kind of funny jump of phi, uh, and that's why this is actually a non-consistent method. So it's non-consistent and non-conservative, but with particular choice of this penalty, we can actually show that we get a stable solution in the sense that we don't get any strange oscillations, we don't get um, uh, a non-invertible stiffness matrix. But nevertheless, this is an old method. We show that, uh, that it's inconsistent and non-conservative, so we, we don't really use this method anymore. A method that is also very old but still used very uh, frequently is the interior penalty method, um, where we have well, we, we have the same numerical flux as the basile band method for phi, the average of our finite element solution. But for our choice of numerical flux for sigma, we combine sort of the babushka slamal method, right? That's, that's pretty much this term with something that makes this consistent. That is this guy. For the true solution, we have the relation between sigma and phi as, well, minus kappa times the gradient. So sigma is equal to minus kappa times the gradient of phi. So that's precisely what this is. And the true solution also has that the jump of phi is equal to zero. Yeah, so um, if we substitute the true solution into these definitions, uh, then we obtain the the correct uh, fluxes, then our numerical flux becomes the true flux. As that's why this is now a consistent method. Um, and these methods actually also don't have any jumps in the in the numerical fluxes, so this is also a conservative method. And with a particular choice of penalty parameter eta, we also get a stable method. So this method is the first one that checks all the boxes. And that's why it's still being used. And it's actually a very effective method. This is also the method that we'll look into more uh, after I walked over all of the, the entries in this table. Then we have uh, bauman oder method. bauman oder method was inspired uh, or was developed because they are a little bit unhappy with this parameter right here. This is the penalty parameter and only with particular choices do we get a stable uh, scheme. Uh, so they, they, they try to somehow get away uh, from having to choose a certain penalty. As so far, we had one unstable method. We had two stable methods, and both of these involved the penalty, uh, a penalty term here. So the, the bauman oder method tried to develop, or bauman oder tried to develop a, a stable method that was not uh, did not involve any parameters. And well, in in their uh, development of this scheme, they actually had to let go of the. Uh, conservativity, and we can see that because well, we have a plus and a minus for this definition of the numerical flux, which already kind of illustrates that there's a different definition from either side. If there's a different definition from either side, then there's going to be a jump, and that meant that it was non-conservative. Nevertheless, they chose their fluxes in such a way that it is consistent. If I substitute a true uh, single-valued uh, uh, field for phi, then we simply get phi hat is equal to phi, and sigma hat is equal to minus kappa gradient of phi. That's consistent with what uh, the true definitions of uh, the flux is. So we get a, a consistent but not conservative method. Now I have a, a funny wiggly line here. 
uh, for the stability. And that's because that turned out to be very difficult to prove. Uh, they could show it numerically, but they could also not show it numerically for all cases. Uh, so there, I believe um, they needed certain polynomial orders to, to show or to show numer numerically with experiments uh, that they got stable solutions. Now, due to these two facts, though, the fact that it's uh, um, non-conservative and only stable in certain cases, they also had a con uh, suboptimal uh, uh, con uh, convergence of their schemes. Yeah, so they kind of got away or they managed to get to get rid of the stability parameter eta, but as a result, their scheme has other defects. Now, the non-symmetric interior penalty method is, is again trying to fix now the Bauman Oden method by adding a certain penalty. I see I forgot that. Sorry, so there's eta phi in here. And let me also again fix my earlier mistakes. So these are all the numerical, numerical approximations, right? The fine talent approximations. So they tried to fix Bauman and Oden method, Bauman and Oden's method, again by adding a penalty term, which kind of seems strange because that was the whole point of the Bauman and Oden method. Uh, but there is actually a very uh, um, minor restriction in terms of uh, the parameter eta here in order to make this a stable method. Now, again, because we have a different definition of a numerical flux on either side of the interface for phi, this is still a non-conservative uh, method, but it is consistent. Uh, and again, it's, it's stable with a very mild condition on this eta parameter. Now, because it's non-conservative, uh, they also can only prove suboptimal convergence rates though. So then the most advanced method here is the local discontinuous Gelurkin method from 90, 1998. Um, that is sort of just a combination of a whole bunch of these methods. And we have the basi rabin method as simply the averages. Then we have these penalties in here. And well, pretty much what we're doing is adding all kinds of penalties everywhere else as well. But the nice thing here is that we can actually get a, a, a whole wide variety of different methods by different scalings of these different parameters. And the local discontinuous Gelurkin method, in combination with the interior penalty method, are, I would say, the, the two main methods that are being used right now. Um, one special property of the local discontinuous Gelurkin method is, is that if you choose these parameters in a certain way, then you can actually play the trick that I, I mentioned in the previous video, uh, that you, you manage to statically condense out all the interior nodes from your fine element scheme. That's called a hybridizable discontinuous Gelurkin method. Now, last year when I gave this course, a discontinuous Gelurkin was actually in the title of the course, and I spent quite a bit more uh, time on this topic. And this, this edition of the class, I've kind of decided to even things out a little bit more. And I, I won't go into the details there, but I, de I did still think it was... Uh, uh, important to kind of mention this. Um, so this video, I think, is 14 minutes right now. Uh, so I, I wanted to focus a little bit more on the interior penalty method. So I'll pick that one out and I'll substitute these definitions of numerical fluxes into our formulation. And then I can actually show you that that's going to simplify uh, quite a bit. Uh, but I, I think I'll do that in a separate video just to keep things a little bit uh, separated. Okay, so you know, I'll see you in a minute, I suppose.